Living and working close to green spaces is not only good for our health, the economy and society as a whole, but also for the environment and the wildlife that we're so lucky to live alongside. That's why the planners of Worcestershire want to develop a green infrastructure, or GI, which will help us to live harmoniously with the environment that surrounds us, even here in the city centre. Here in Worcester we're lucky enough to have the stunning River Severn running right through the city centre and there are some fantastic examples of GI all along the river. Join me on a journey down the River Severn. We'll see how GI is enhancing all of our lives and why we'd like to see a GI-led approach in planning all of our towns, cities and villages throughout the county. The River Severn has been an incredibly important part of Worcester's infrastructure since the town was first founded in the Roman period as a transport corridor, as a bit of a barrier of course, that people had to get across the river so it's been forded, it's been bridged at various times. The GI functions of the River Severn have really changed a lot through time, so 500 years ago this was a busy commercial artery, boats going up and down all the time and uh, cargoes being unloaded and so, and, and so on. Now it's very much a, a, a leisure route and uh, you have canal boats, rowing boats and so on on the river. Here at Chapter Meadows, recreation is also a big feature of the GI function. We have dog walkers, cyclists, just general people going out and enjoying themselves and also we put on events and activities across the meadows. It's a large piece of open green space which people can appreciate. It's 12 hectares or 30 acres in old money. It sets such a landmark for the rest of the city. The large open space of Chapter Meadows means that flooding can occur across the meadows and not impact on housing. The GI function here is predominantly it's as a floodplain meadows. We have cattle grazing on Chapter Meadows and it's amazing for people to come across them as they walk in their dog or just um, walking to and from the city. The cattle are here for a reason as well as a recreational um, dis discovery. They're here as a wildlife management for the site. The River Severn is really important for wildlife including iconic species like otters. They and numerous other species can be found here at Chapter Meadows and what's really nice about well-planned green infrastructure is that as well as being multifunctional and doing great things for, uh, for things like flood defence and for recreation, they're also brilliant for wildlife. Here at Chapter Meadows, for example, you can find kingfishers flying up and down the small ditches. Really iconic things that people might not see and might be surprised to find right in the centre of a city. So here, good management with grazing livestock means that there's a diverse range of plants which is also good for the animals that feed on them or use them. And that means that people can come and see all of those features very close to where they live and work, which is the principle of green infrastructure, integrating all of those things together. We're opposite Chapter Meadows. This is a new development in Diglis. The development's been constructed with some of the principles of green infrastructure in mind. So instead of being set directly along the river, the development is set back, there's space for wildlife, there's space for recreation, there's space for flood storage. We're standing in what's soon to be a beautiful wildflower meadow. Hopefully in another few hundred years it will look much the same as Chapter Meadows and people will be having many of the benefits that they have in Chapter Meadows, so the enjoyment for people and the benefits for wildlife. It's our first stage towards retirement and we'd always envisaged living by water but still the move was a big decision but what attracted us to the apartment here was its setting, the views that we've got and the lifestyle it could offer us with being so close to Worcester. The development was built with some meadow grass as one of the features and in fact we had some lovely flowers coming up in the spring and the summer. Just to ensure we've got another supply next year, I've actually bought some uh, extra seeds to sprinkle surreptitiously. So uh, I'm hoping that they will grow. But it's lovely having the meadow grass in front of us, but also the established meadow. It is really beautiful. We're building about 450 properties here. We're about halfway through already and we envisage that we'll be here until about 2018 because we know about a lot of brownfield development, we've had a lot of brownfield experience. 
we were able to calculate exactly what was involved and really go in with gusto in conjunction with the environmental agency, the local authority planning department and British Waterways to produce something quite spectacular here. One of our hobbies is Nordic walking and living here we've been able to practice that. There is a footpath either side of the river and 200 yards away is the new bridge which has enabled us to do a whole circuit. This is Diggis Bridge. This is a new piece of GI that has been put in place to enable walking and cycling movements between one side of the river and the other. What this bridge enables is for people to actually cross at this point but also it creates a, a circular loop between this and, and the existing Worcester Bridge and enables people to use the riverbank. It's an exciting bit of GI and we've had over 200,000 people use it so far in just over a year which is really good. GI like this, this bridge that I'm stood on and the riverside pass that it links up to and the paths that go off in all sorts of different directions from this point are so important because people really value the opportunity to get about on cycle, on bicycles or on foot away from traffic and in nice pleasant green situations. The river here is fabulous, it's a lovely resource but it was underused because there was nowhere to cross it down at this end of the town. With the bridge in place, people now come here, they do the Riverside Loop, they use it to get to work, they use it to get to school. It's all of these things. Normally I would travel down by car, but today I don't have a car, so I've walked and used the bridge for the first time, which is lovely. Well, I didn't know where I was going, so I just followed the towpath and hoped for the best. And yeah, it was quite a surprise. I've seen it from the road, but I've never seen it on foot. So yeah, it was, it was quite pleasant apart from the wind. I have to travel quite a bit to the other side of the river. Sometimes it can be quite stressful and it's just broken up the day a little bit. It's been nice to get out of the office, get a bit of fresh air, go for a bit of a walk. It's been much nicer than my usual car journey, definitely. So in our journey along the River Severn, we've seen the benefits that green infrastructure can bring. But as you've just seen, these are real benefits to real people. And these things don't happen by accident. They have to be designed by bringing partners together. That's why we'd like planners and developers throughout Worcestershire to take account of green assets wherever they are, and also design and create new environments for us all to enjoy throughout the future. The Worcestershire GI Partnership is helping to achieve this led by the County Council, Natural England and the Worcestershire Wildlife Trust. The partnership includes the district councils, environmental bodies and health and social bodies. We're currently mapping green infrastructure networks and developing a strategy for the delivery of new GI across the whole county. Have a think about what green infrastructure means to you. What are your local green infrastructure assets? It doesn't have to be a big river. It might be a small brook, a hedgerow network, a woodland, a nature reserve, a park or something else entirely. We all want to see a healthy and natural environment, but if we want to see the benefits that we've all looked at today, then green infrastructure has to be at the heart of every planning decision. <laughs>